Hi guys, I'm David with MediaUnlock.net, and today we're hanging out with Bill Cole again, who's been helping me out a lot lately. The nice thing is that Bill is an accomplished photographer like myself, and I can run the video camera a lot of times while having him talk about the technical aspects, and it makes it a lot easier. But today we decided we'd team up on this uh, review. He's only here because he wants to use my studio. Pretty much. That's that's really it. Uh, why don't you tell what we're reviewing today? I think we're kind of excited about it. Yeah, we are. We're taking a look today at Canon's new 16-35 to 2.8 lens. It is the bomb. It is also very expensive. Uh, yes, it is. It's very expensive. 2200 I think. Let's just say that my house gets two and a half months older before I pay for this lens. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Exactly. Uh, and it's, it is expensive, but it is the bomb lens. I mean, it's, they've put a lot of development time into it. They've put a lot of work into it. They've put a lot of resources into it. Yeah. They're very proud of the lens, as my colleague would say. They're very proud of this lens and the price reflects it, but yes. it's worth it. Yeah, I, I think both of us as a whole, we really did enjoy it. Uh, Bill is really going to dive into the technical aspects. Uh, I spent three weeks in Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana shooting. Uh, the best place that I got to shoot was the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Park. And I also did some shooting, again, uh, in Colorado and Montana, and I really, really enjoyed it. But I'm going to let Bill dive into some of the technical aspects about it, then we're going to talk about our personal experience on how the lens uh, functioned and operated, uh, in our opinion, uh, outside of just the technical babble. Yeah, the, the technical side of it. This is, of course, a uh, part of Canon's trilogy, the RED 2.8 series. They're in there trying to uh, turn out the best kind of hobbyist, prosumer level lens that they can turn out. Now, the tech specs on this one is very simple. It's a little bit heavy. It comes in at 690 grams. The lens that it is replacing was 650. Just to give you a comparison, the F4 is 615 grams. But the Tamron, Tamron has got my issue. He comes in at 1,100 grams. Tamron's that heavy? The Tamron is 1,100 grams on this thing, so it's lighter than the Tamron. Well, that's nice. Um, other aspects of it, it gives you a, a uh, 63 to 108 degree angle of view. Now, the 63, of course, is the 35 millimeter side, 108 is 16 millimeters. Uh, the focus distance on it is about 11 inches, roughly. Um, it's got nine blades in the aperture, which is competitive with the Sigma 50 Art, by the way. They've got nine blades also. Yeah. Well, you want to uh, dive I... into what the blades actually mean? For yeah, the, the, that... the blades are really cool because, for one thing, they give you a much better bokeh effect. The more blades right. you have on the lens, the closer the circle of your bokeh, as opposed to a shade. Right, it has to do with the light coming in through mm -hmm. the lens with the different blades to give exactly. you a different effect. Mm -hmm. um, and some people like it, some people don't. You prefer more blades, the better. I love the blades. I love the more blades, the better. I also love the fact that you can go to F22 if you've got a bright enough reflection and spot and create a starburst. And the more blades you have, the better your starburst. Right. Uh, that's kind of what I like to do. I like to play with reflections and starbursts and things like that. So I really appreciate the number of blades in yeah. a lens. Uh, it's fantastic. So the, you know, the technical side, it's got, a, it's got a, two UD lenses in it to reduce the chromatic aberration, which has been a problem historically for 16 to 35 lenses. They've had a lot of chromatic aberration. Um, also, this particular one drops one lens grouping. It goes down to 11 groups uh, from the 12 that is common for this size. And back to the chromatic aberration, the nice thing is these days with Lightroom and, and Photoshop, yeah. it is much easier to, to take out. I remember when I first started out in digital and Bill oh, started wow. out in film. You and, couldn't do anything yeah, with it in film. It was it, too it, fine of a line. Yeah. Um, so. it, it, when it first started out as digital, there wasn't a little button that you clicked and said, please take out chromatic aberration. Uh, it laughed at you. Yeah. It, you, it laughed at you. <laughs> there's yeah, not, there's not a lot you. you could do. Uh, you could maybe play around with your colors a little bit and try to blend it into the, the photo a little bit better. Um, but it's not as easy. But it's still nice not to have to worry about that and have a cleaner looking shot. But what's really cool today is, of course, you've got Photoshop, Lightroom. DxO is well known yeah. for its uh, chromatic aberration uh, dissolving capabilities. Yeah. I don't know what you And call I'm sure it. there's a plugin out there that you can. That, oh, of that, course. That's exactly what the plugin yeah. does. So this thing is it's built into. It's built to please. Yeah. The lens is built to please. Yeah, it's a hefty price, but it's a hefty lens and it's worth the money. Now, you used it in Montana and Wyoming. I did. Tell, me, tell me what you shot out there. So. I mostly use it for landscape. As, as you guys know, I'm, I'm really into landscape photography. I did not get a chance to really use it for any star photography, and it is a little narrow. Um, when it comes to my star photography, I like to shoot it between a 10 or 14 millimeters. Um, but it does have the f2.8, which is great. So it's got the speed. It's fast. It, it's fast. Um, things that I really, really liked, uh, it really focused quick. When I, when yes. I picked a focus point, boom, it, it focused on and it was that quiet. Point. It's very quiet. Um, now, one thing that Bill and I both did come across 
is the the lack of image stabilization the lack of image stabilization i'm kind of disappointed a lens at this price point i kind of expect to have it now admittedly i'm using lenses on a tripod nine times out of ten so image stabilization for me is less of an image but one of the things that i'm going to talk about in a little bit is how i did use it handheld right. which means i did want that image stabilization and it wasn't there i'm sorry i'm just yeah. a little disappointed and in that. we understand when there's not image stabilization on a uh, a prime lens right when a lens that doesn't zoom, but when you have a lens that does zoom, yeah. image stabilization is a huge thing. The other issue that we ran into is the, and now this can be a positive or a negative depending on what you're uh, shooting, yes. is the vignetting. The vignetting. Even at an f8, there was some distortion in vignetting. Now very, very small amounts, but at f2.8. It was bad. Right. It but was... the good thing is, again, we go back to Photoshop, Lightroom. Mm -hmm. You can go and on artistic and fix choice. That. Yeah. Now we're going to pop up right about now a series of images that goes from f2.8 to f20, I believe it is, okay. that I took of a fountain downtown Lexington just a couple of days ago. And it will show you the vignetting and, and take a look at the different f stops that you're seeing right now. Right. And that will give you exactly what the vignetting issue is. It 2.8. It's really a hefty vignette. I don't know that unless I'm making an artistic choice, I don't know that I'd shoot this lens at 2.8. Right. And that does negate some of the speed. Right. Because if I don't have 2.8 available... And what we'll also do is we'll, we'll add a download link so you guys could download these images yes. to, to take a look mm -hmm. at. So you don't... Because, again, YouTube's quality is not nearly as good as the actual raw quality of the exactly. photo. So I'll provide a raw and a JPEG version of it for you. Do you just have the JPEG? I got the JPEG, but I can get you the raws. Okay, yeah. So we'll try to get you the raw and JPEG of those for the downloads. Just look in the description down below. So back to Montana. And uh, really, Montana was great, but I did most of my shooting. In he the didn't Tetons. want to come back. I didn't. Like, in fact, he overhung by days, and I threatened to have to go yeah, out and like Bill, wreck Bill wanted, his car. I, Bill wanted to use the 16 to 35, and I was like, well, I might be out here a little bit longer. And Bill's like, really? You want, you want to play that game, do you? Because uh, Bill is getting ready to go on his trip. Which and, I'll talk about yeah. in a minute. Um, so, we, so I spent <clears throat> a week in the Teton shooting, and I, I minus the weight. That was an issue, and I noticed that. It was it was great to use. I used it with water, um, and I'll pop up a picture right now that shows uh, this beautiful uh, stream uh, and just the the way that I just did a, a really uh, long shutter speed to get that ghost to get that beautiful haze uh, with the trees. I also got a really cool picture of the mountains with this beautiful path. Let's all pop up. And uh, I haven't got a chance to edit all the pictures at the time of making of this what, video. You're behind. I'm always behind. So hopefully I'll have a few more pictures edited that will add to the end of the video or I'll be able to pop up as we're talking. He still thinks Reagan's president. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I it's hard to keep up. I've got so much stuff to edit. Oh, yeah. I, and I can't believe how far behind I let myself get. Cause <laughs> you're like, I was you're behind. Like a year behind. A year? You're giving if models, I'm only a year behind. You're giving models their pictures like a year late. Mm -hmm. um, so I got, I got some beautiful pictures with it. Now, if I was doing more landscape work, I, I would probably really consider this lens. Uh, but at the price tag of $2,200, it's really hard to justify it. I did do a little bit of shooting at a wedding uh, mm -hmm. this weekend. And I, I'm going to pop up a few of those pictures uh, at some point in time during this video or again at the end. Uh, it got some really cool, really, really cool yeah. wide shots of the bride and groom that I was really happy with. And I think they're going to flip when they see them. Well, you got to make sure you give them the pictures before we release this video then. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. They probably don't want to somehow stumble across this video and then be like, I haven't gotten these you know, yet. You can do the mosaic pixel thing over their faces. They'll never notice. <laughs> oh, okay. Trust me. Now, I shot this, this lens in a couple of different places. I made a trip to the Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina almost immediately upon David's return because, like I said, he kind of hung around for a while out there and I had to threaten him. But I took it down to the Blue Ridge Parkway and I shot it at a place called Water Rock Knob, which is about 6,000 feet. I was stalking an elusive sunset. In fact, we're gonna go to that video right now. So hi, this is Bill with Media Unlocked and I am high up in the Blue Ridge Mountains tonight on Water Rock Knob, getting ready to stalk the elusive wild sunset. Hey, I've been using this Canon 16-35 to lens for the last three days. I've photographed waterfalls, sunrises, sunsets, and this thing is performing like a dream. Now, I'm an old school guy. I would learned back in the film days that you don't really want to shoot anything under 50 millimeters, and certainly not under 35, because of the distortion. Well, I'm here to tell you that at 35 millimeters, 
the Canon lens is performing beautifully. Yes, it does have a little bit of distortion, but it's only when you get down to the 16 millimeter side that the distortion becomes a significant issue. I wound up finding an old abandoned carnival, and that 16 millimeters was really, really cool. Not only could I get right up on top of it, but by using some few compositional techniques, you wind up bringing out some prominence in your photographs that is really some amazing effects. So I'm up here again, looking for a sunset tonight. I'm hoping we find us a pretty one because this is my last chance to use this lens up here. I have been up here in the Carolina mountains now for three days and the shooting has been glorious. You guys need to come see us down here in Western North Carolina because it's one of the most beautiful places in the world to photograph. So we'll show you some images. I'm going to run this lens again through it one more time and we'll see you in a little bit. You see, I was at Water Rock Knob and I wanted to try this lens on a landscape. Now, I am not as much of a landscape photographer as David is, or a videographer as you guys see the sun changing in oh, color God. during the hey, video. Hey, I was doing it by myself, okay? <laughs> I actually taught Bill how to shoot video like hours before he left and for you his know, trip. If he he was did a pretty good, teacher, I thought. If he was a better teacher, it probably would have worked. Hey, I thought the audio and the video wasn't bad. I'm for just proud that got, doesn't know what they're doing. I'm just proud that I wise. found the microphone hole on the yes. camera side. But we <laughs> shot the video down there while I was doing it. We took a look at sunsets. I was also shooting for um, waterfalls and things like that, yep. but I discovered something. It's got an 82 millimeter filter size, and guess who only had a 77 millimeter circular polarizer? This guy. Yeah, so no waterfall pictures, because you shoot a waterfall and the sun's up without a polarizer, why bother? Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't get it. But I did order. get a couple of really cool sunset shots. One of them just happens to be popping up right yeah. about now. And the shot came out really great. I Thank love you. the rays of sun those, coming those out. Those rays that. came out, and, and actually that was the very it's first. It's almost like a sandwich. You've got the sky, you've got yeah. the, uh, the landscape down below, and it's the sandwich mm -hmm. of sun being forced out of it. it was and the amazing cool. part, that was the very first exposure I took that day. Yeah. It, uh, it just happened great. to work out. Now, I also used it uh, on my way down to the Blue Ridge Parkway to shoot something that I have been wanting to shoot for probably three decades. Now in Pioneer, Tennessee, which is a little bit north of Knoxville, there is an old abandoned amusement park kind of place. Yeah. Now they had this building there that they sold fireworks out of, but the fireworks building went out of business a few years ago and the building got very decrepit. They put up a fence and you know, be a good photographer, don't trespass when you've got a locked fence. Obviously, you're not supposed to be there. So I would just drive up to the fence and I'd get out of my car and I'd hang my head over and I'd get my little puppy dog face and I'd go, <sighs> well, I went down there and I pulled into the pilot gas station there to get a cup of coffee because it was about good stopping distance from right. Lexington. The building's gone, the fence is gone. It's now a big gravel parking lot with really cool things to take a picture of. So. I went in and I shot it. There was no gate, there was no fence, the no trespassing signs were down. So I went in and I shot it. Now the image that I took there, there are three of them that are really cool. There are two old Ferris wheels and this old truck that they used to put kids in and drive them around the parking lot. I love it, I love it. And then the distortion worked in your favor on this And this is the distortion effect. Now, I'm an old school guy. I really was taught very simply in the film days, yeah, no comments about being old and dirt. Um, be nice. Yeah. I already uh -huh. gave you a hard time about not knowing how to shoot video with a DSLR. Yo, you can't find your way back from Montana. It's not that hard. <laughs> Just drive east, young man. Um, but, uh, you know, back in the old school days, if you got below 50 millimeters, the distortion was so bad that you really didn't want to use it. Right. Um, and, and so I learned never use anything under 50. And if you are, go down to 35 maybe, but never less than 35. But I really wanted the effect of the distortion here. And that's one of the things that I was playing with with this lens. I wanted to see what that distortion was. So I got down right in front of that truck and I shot it at an angle that was low so that I could deliberately bring that 16 millimeter distortion out. And as you saw from the picture, it's really cool. Yeah. It makes the it makes the actual vehicle look longer it than does. it really is. And it brings the really cool thing is the way you, you angled it, making the Ferris wheel in the background actually look Thank closer you. so that it's a compressed photo um, where the mm -hmm. distance is actually much further than it looks like in this photo. And, you know, the, the beauty of it is that you can, knowing this, you can go into it and right. use that effect for artistic purposes. So I, I used it for those two, but I also came back up and, well, last Saturday night I snuck out with it. I went down to Heritage Hall in Lexington and I shot my friends, the Roller Girls. Yeah, Did I tell you about that? Yeah, this was cool. Yeah, what? yeah, I missed out. You had invited me, but I ended up getting a job right beforehand. I wasn't able to make it with you. Uh, well, I hung out with girls, so it was a good trade-off. Yeah, well, yeah. Now, the Roller Girls of Central Kentucky rock, as we call them affectionately. It's a roller derby team on the Women's Flat Track Roller Derby Association League. And they've been playing. This is their 10th anniversary year. And I usually shoot for them a couple of bouts each year, but this year I got a little busy. 
And this was the only one I've been able to hit. It was the last one of the year. They were playing the Red River Sirens, and the Sirens put up a good game, but Rock won. But I wanted to try out Our girls lights. know how to roll over, over other girls here. Well, that is the purpose of it. <laughs> so I'm popping up a picture that we just took right now. And one of the things I wanted to do was to try to find a couple of my friends as they watched the bout going on. And you're going to see here just a couple of the girls. I'm standing behind them on the, on the uh, uh, bench side. And I just take a picture of the action that's going on. And it's really a cool. Again, I was looking for that distortion. I made sure I shot this at the 16 millimeters. The other thing we did is that, well, David and I kind of made a field trip last night. <laughs> did not work out as well as planned, but we got a really cool video We did get it. a cool video, and we got a cool shot out of yeah. it, even though it wasn't a, sh a shot that we went looking for. But we went down to Weisenberger Mill in Midway, Kentucky, which is was, it was built, David, in 1913, yeah. and it's been family-owned ever since then. They make the best grits. Now, That's, I know. I'm Southern. I like grits. I've heard. I have um, heard that. And Weta Michael, a local five-star chef, she has crafted a shrimp and cheese grits dish that I haven't tried, but you need to. Oh, it's, obsessed it's amazing. With it, so. But they, she gets her grits from Weisenberger. So at any case, we went down there and we were going to shoot this old abandoned bridge that they're replacing and get the water coming over the dam and this really cool sunset shot. And there was no water. There was no water. There was, it there hasn't was some, really but not rained. enough. Not enough. Water. And we had a few other issues, so we crawled down underneath it. And the picture that we're popping up right now is taken with the 16 to 35 at right at 16 millimeters. Yeah. And it's of the bridge and the waterfall part that did work. So we got a good shot yeah, out of it. I mean, and maybe it's not the best picture and it's not what we were looking for, but it's a good shot. We made a video that pretty much uh, has to do with when you show up to get a shot and it's not there. What do you do, Bill? You play your favorite Rolling Stone song. <laughs> you can't always get what you want, but if you try Five sometimes, times. you just it's might find time. you get, get what, what you, you need. need. Uh, so that video uh, should be available. It might be out by the time this comes out. It may not, but we're, it's going to be. It's a really cool video that Bill and I did on just learning how to make uh, lemonade with lemons, in a manner of speaking. If you exactly. can't get, if you can't get what you want, doesn't mean there isn't something else there because you've already put the time and effort to get there. So why waste it? And as I pointed out in the video that we made. Great photographer, Matt Kay. Yes. Always says, look behind you, because there's always another shot there right is. around the corner. So that was a fun little So it turned out really good. Yeah, and, it did. Uh, and we, get, we did get a, a really cool shot with the 16 to 35. Mm -hmm. It did. Overall, I've got to say, I love this lens. I am not sure whether or not I'm going to buy it. At the price tag, it's a little steep. Yes, it is. And mm -hmm. for as much as we use a 16 to 35, we physically had to find stuff to do to use it. It wasn't like it was yeah. falling into our lap, something that we were using every day. The wedding I did, that is something that I could use it for. The roller girls. Um, if I was, but I only travel, I only do a big trip like once a year for two or three weeks out west. I do a couple, yeah. three, but. Yeah, but is, is it enough for me to spend that kind of money on a lens? Um, and for me, no, I, I just can't pay $2,200 for a lens that I'm going to use. It's a good use. choice to rent. Yes, and it's a great, it's a, it's it's a great lens. I love the for, lens for I very love specific this things. I I love this lens. That's all there is to yeah, it. Yeah, it's a great lens. Yeah. And if it's something that that you're going to use on a regular basis, then I would really take a look at this. And you know, you probably have a local camera store. There's nothing wrong with going and renting the lens for. I a few do it all days the time. And testing it out before you go buy something, because that's a lot of money to drop on anything. It is. Really. It is, you and can, if it's not something you're going to use on a daily basis, I'm not sure you'd get your money back from it. Really. Right, so it needs to be something for us, at least for us to spend that kind of money. Yeah. It needs to be a day, daily kit thing. Um, but 7200, 24 to 70, you know, those are what's sitting in. 85 millimeters yeah. is what's sitting in our bag. And if I walk out of here tonight and I happen to find a paycheck for $2,300 because there's a sales <laughs> tax, you know I'm going to get it. Yeah. I, I want the lens. I, I want to have it. But it's not necessarily the best move. And it's a choice for, thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's all it is. It's a choice. I'd love to have this lens in my bag. But as David said, 85 is a little more useful for what I shoot. Yeah. The 70 to 200 is actually the next lens I need to buy because I stole his for a few weeks. And Don't tell I me. use my 70 to 200 all the time. Yeah, I found I fell my, in love with it. I started 85, using it for 24 to 70 are probably, and then the 50, of course. You love that 50 Sigma art. Yeah. You're obsessed with it. Those are the four lenses that we that we pretty much go back to back. And the beauty part is that's why I didn't mind the weight of this because yeah. the Sigma is such a heavy lens. I got that's used true. to it. Right, and the weight is not that big of a deal unless you're going backcountry camping and right. you're taking five or you know you're taking a handful of lenses for a bunch of different shots. And it's not much heavier than the twenty-four to seventy right. Tamron that I have. So the weight could become a problem, but again, it's going to be something yeah. where you're going to have it on you all day, and you've got a lot of other equipment, and so that weight, you know. 
But overall, the basic conclusion, I would love to have this yeah, lens. We, um, I mean, I think it's a four out of five, five out of a five. Uh, it's a four out of five. It'd be four and a half out of five if it had image stabilization yeah. for me, and it'd be a five out of five. If they fix the vignetting a little bit. Yeah. Because I can always add the vignetting. I don't need to have it in camera. Exactly. So it's something that can always be And it's be a added. little harsh at 2.8. That yeah. does negate some of the speed. It does. Um, but yeah, we're very happy with it. You guys should check it out. Well, you guys have made it this far, so you know what you should be doing. Hitting that subscribe button down below. Now, of course, you want to check out the newest video that we just put out. It's going to be over here, uh, past Bill's head, somewhere over in that area. And then down and diagonal in the corner. That is where you can click and take a look at this bad boy through B&H. And if it's, you're interested in purchasing it, please go ahead and do so because we get a little bit of commission. And that is what helps keep us making videos day in and day out. But anyways, guys, as I always say, I'll catch you next time. Because... We're worth it.